Hello, mga kabalero. The next topic for our digital image processing series is image restoration. And this is very common if we are using image processing applications like Photoshop. This presentation will show us what is happening behind after applying several techniques to restore degraded images. Image restoration from the word itself is the process of recovering an image from a corrupted version. And the purpose of image restoration is to compensate for or undo the defects which degrade an image. In this section, we will be tackling mean or averaging filter which is used to restore noisy images. So mean or averaging filter is one of the smoothing spatial filters that are available and used for blurring and noise reduction. Blurring is used in pre-processing tasks such as removal of small details from an image prior to large object extraction. Mean or averaging filter is also called the box filter because the kernel being used is like a box. The other name for this type of filter is a low-pass filter as they are simply the average of the pixels contained in the neighborhood of a filter mask. So let me show you an example using an animation. So if we evaluate the 3x3 three three kernel here, and that is the matrix on, uh, at, the, at the middle of the screen, you will see that the coefficients are equal. and it is one, all ones. This is also known as the mask. Also, checking on the input image, there are some pixels which looks random like the zero in between the 90 pixels and also the 90 on the bottom left, which is likely unnecessary. So what's the implication of this random uh, pixel values on your image? So. Look at looking at, or for example, you have a picture and there are several white pixels on top of your images or your image, and it's somehow very unnecessary. And we want those random pixels to be removed. Therefore, we will be using an image processing technique, which we now introduce as the mean or averaging filter to remove those uh, sporadic or unnecessary pixels on our picture. So by applying the, what we call convolution, meaning the kernel will be multiplied to the matrix of the input image, and then we can generate the restored output image through blurring. So the math behind is very simple, though the name is convolution. It's, it looks like out of this world, right? But let me show you a quick animation to uh, explain it further and how the convolution is being done. Looking at the screen, you will see that the kernel or the mask starts from the top left-hand portion of your image. And now the kernel is being multiplied or not being multiplied, is being um, moved to the next step. And then it does, what, what it does is it average the uh, pixels on the box. So now you have the first pixel on your image is 90. And then as you can see, it's now a member of the box. Now 90 divided by nine, since we have uh, nine uh, inputs here, right? So you will see that the output is now 10, right? The next is 90 and 90, that's 180. Now divided by nine, you have 20. Moving on to the next one, 270 divided by nine, now you have 30. So I'm going to stop here since the process will be the same all throughout. Now, showing you again the resulting image and I applied a heat map so that we can see that the highest pixel values will uh, get the greatest white and uh, the lower the pixel values, it will be um, going to like black or, or gray. Now, uh, you will see that the varying grayscale values and the random pixels 
from the original picture or from the original image is gone. So let's see an example using MATLAB. So I have here, uh, the very first thing to do is to do the IM read to load up our picture. And this PillNet JPEG is this one. And we will convert the image to grayscale because this is for uh, the image restoration for grayscale images. Now we introduced a salt and pepper noise and salt and pepper is very usual for uh, a degraded image where, for example, it's a, a, a very old image. Salt and pepper noise is um, introduced or being added to our uh, pictures accidentally or uh, through time, right? Now, to remove those salt and pepper noise, we will be using F special as our code, and then we apply average uh, for our uh, mean filter. Now, three is the kernel, kernel value, like uh, what we used for our example. So this uh, subplots, I am show, these are just uh, representation on uh, showing the images so that we can compare the original image, the noisy image, and then the restored image. So let's run this code to see what will happen. And this is how it looks like. The original image looks like this, and then the salt, uh, the image with the salt and pepper noise looks like this. And after applying the uh, mean filter, this is how it looks like. So the restored image is uh, somehow near to the original image and it is successful of removing removing the salt and pepper noise. And later on, uh, when I show you an example for uh, the RGB image, image uh, restoration example, um, I will be um, adding no longer uh, salt and pepper noise, we'll be adding Gaussian noise uh, so that we can use other um, noise examples on our uh, projects. All right, so let's go back to the presentation. So to summarize, uh, we first introduce salt and pepper noise again in this example, just for demonstration purposes. And the salt and pepper noise would represent the random 90 and zero pixels, which we saw from the convolution uh, animation that we have provided. And using the F special function, we plugged in the average to represent the mean filter. Then we indicated the kernel dimension, which is a uh, which is three or a three by three matrix. So we used the three by three matrix, which is composed of all ones and is similar to our example from the previous slide. And by running the IM filter function, we now have the program of the convolution of our input image, which or with, with the added noise in the kernel or the filter mask. So let's move on to our example for the RGB image. So for the I, for the uh, um, colored image, we have the IM read. We no longer removed the, or we, we no longer converted to the grayscale image. Apologies for the title. This is still grayscale image. This should be colored image. Now we implement Gaussian noise. And later we'll, seeing, we'll be seeing uh, how a Gaussian noise looks like. We use the F special again, and then same average, and then the three for the kernel. Now let's run this code and see what happens. So the original image looks like this, and then the noisy image is a bit um, degraded versus the salt and pepper. Now the Gaussian or the restored image using um, the min filter is a bit near also, a bit near to the original image as we can see. And that's how it looks like. Pretty good, right? Now let's move on to summarize our um, examples for the mean or averaging filter. So for the mean filter in uh, an RGB image, I have added again a Gaussian noise to interfere with the original image for demonstration purposes. Same with the first example, I used the same parameters for the filter mask and display the noisy image and the restored image for comparison. 
So the process and the math behind the other blurring techniques that you will see on the screen are almost the same. The only difference is the characteristics of the kernel being used. So displayed on the screen are the kernels for Gaussian blur, blur on the left-hand side of uh, the screen, sharpened kernel at the middle and uh, you have the edge detection on the right. So the edge detection is also known as the Laplacian filter. And you will notice that the kernel value or the matrices of the Gaussian blur, the edge detection, and the sharpened kernel, and also the mean or average filter uh, differs from its values. If you can see, the Gaussian blur has fractions in here. Uh, the highest value would be the, the ones on the edges. And then for the edge detection, it has negatives and then an eight at the center. And as you can see, for sharpened kernel, you have um, zeros uh, on the edges, edges, edge, edges of the screen or of the of the mask, and then you have five at the center and negative ones at the center edge. All right, so this is the end of this presentation, and I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you so much.